So for this tip, um, I wanted to show you guys a few things about the new AnyCAD support um, as seen in Autodesk Inventor. A um, couple of different things to, uh, to show here. Um, if we look in and take a look first at converting a, uh, a non-Inventor model, um, a lot of that is the same process. We're just going to go through open, change our, change our uh, files of type here. And then once we click the open button, we get to deal with, with um, this new import box. And um, it will give us, by default, our options for converting a model to an inventor model, whether it's a part or an assembly. Uh, but we also have the ability to make it a reference model so that it will maintain the, uh, the link back to the original CATIA part. Basically what that means is that if the CATIA part gets changed, the reference model or the, the uh, inventor model will change. Um, we'll see a little bit more about that when we look at the, uh, the DWG side of things. It works pretty much the same way. But we do get the ability here in this box to go ahead and load the model, get a preview of what we're going to get before accepting that. Um, we can change it to, you know, I just want surfaces. Uh, we can do some of that here. Uh, we can come back and change some of these options here. And I'll simply click OK. And then obviously if, if we wanted to have this as an inventor model, we would go ahead and, um, and save this. Um, we do have that link, like I said, back to the original CATIA part. So once again, if that gets replaced, then this inventor model will indeed update. Um, we will not be changing this inventor model to change the CATIA part, but, um, but once, it, uh, once it does get changed, then any changes would come through um, here in our inventor part. We can break that link. We can suppress that link. We can go back and edit the import options if we want to. Uh, change some of those things. So um, that's where things stand with, uh, with bringing in other model types. Um, as far as the DWG side, it's actually very cool. Um, we've, we've gone through, you know, for years been able to start a new sketch and bring in AutoCAD geometry and, and place it on that sketch or import it into that sketch and then obviously use that for our features. Um, there is a new way of doing things, and basically what it allows is us to, uh, to import um, our, um, our AutoCAD data. And we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll, uh, we'll pick a, a face for that to go, and pick a spot for that to go. And we get a little message here, um, file into which you are placing. This component has not been saved. This may cause problems in resolving links between files. That's okay. Um, and then this is really the key right here, the important one. Inserting AutoCAD DWG produces an, an associative underlay. Underlay geometry can be used by projecting geometry onto a 2D sketch. And that is exactly what we want to do. Um, First thing we're going to do though is actually get this geometry located where we want it. And what I mean is let's go ahead and hit the hit the home view here just a minute. If we turn on, you know, a couple of these planes, let me just uh, set the visibility of that and hit that home view. We're way out in space here. So let's get back in here just a little bit and reset this geometry. To do that we're just going to right click, we're going to select translate and notice that we get this little uh, little heads up toolbar here. So the first thing we want to do is pick a, uh, a location to move from and I'm going to get the center point of that and then we want to snap to and what I'm going to do is pick our center point. And now let's go ahead and get back to home. Notice that we were right on the origin of the model itself. That makes things very nice. Now we'll go ahead and start that sketch. We want to be on the XY plane and we're going to go ahead and project some DWG geometry. Um, one of the nice things, another little heads-up toolbar. We can project single line geometry 
or we can project uh, connected geometry. That allows us to get an entire loop. And I'm going to go ahead and get that loop, and I think I'll get this one. Um, let's go ahead and get the, uh, the edges here too. Let's see, and there we go. Alright, so we'll go ahead and finish that sketch. Actually, let me go in there and let's do, uh, do one little thing here. Of course, this is just uh, parametric work. We're going to bring that, uh, bring that in. And let's go ahead and show just those, uh, those dimension names. Make things a little bit easier. We'll finish that sketch. And we'll do an extrude. And that was D0 that we just put in. So let's go ahead and name that out. And we'll click OK. Um, turn off our origin planes for a minute. What I want to do to get some of this other geometry, some of the uh, the flat geometry here, just go ahead and import that, that same drawing one more time. We'll go ahead and open it. We'll pick that flat face. And we'll even pick back here in the corner. Once again, uh, was it set up for zero, 0, so we see those uh, those two boxes. And I believe we go out here in space, and sure enough, there it is. So we're going to go ahead and translate this. And we're going to locate our origin right there. And then snap to, let's get a home view here. We'll snap to this edge right there. And let's hit our check mark. There we go. Now I can go into my sketch. Let's project some geometry here. Um, let's see, we've got our loop there. We'll get uh, those. Looks like we've got the four centers. That's cool. Um, going to go ahead and add in just a little bit of uh, a few dimensions here. Oh, and I want to do just a little bit more projection. I'm going to switch to just the single line and get those two lines. And let's go ahead and dimension some things here. Let's get the fillet dimension. Let's get the outer counterbore dimension and the inner counterbore dimension or the whole dimension there. And then also this counterboard depth. There we go. And once again, just because of the parametric, we can go ahead and, and uh, go through and pick our edges here. We'll set that value at, looks like D3 is our uh, dimension. Click OK. And let's go ahead and do our hole. Outside looks like D5. Oh, doesn't look that extra inch there. We'll get rid of that. Um, nope, outside is D4, isn't it? And then D5. Nope, D6. Let's see if that's right. D6, there we go. And then finally, our whole diameter, and that is D5. All right. And we need to pick our centers, so we'll pick that, and there, and there, and there. Looks like those are all set. Okay. And we can go ahead and set the visibility of our... Uh, of our imported drawings, get those turned off. So we're back to our our neat little part. Now, one of the very cool things about this um, this AnyCAD support is the ability to change that file. Like I said, somebody comes in and they change the AutoCAD file, so we want this file to update. Well, what I'm going to do is just go in and reset some names here. And there we have the YA base drawing, which is what I used, and an old drawing. So what I'm going to do is rename this one. And let's see, dash update. 
and then we'll rename the other one and get rid of the old on it or I'm sorry I'll select cancel notice that all of a sudden we need to have an update and even our uh, our YA base drawing says that we need to have an update so let's go ahead and update that and you can see there that the model automatically changes uh, very simple very quick um, so any changes that would come through and that's whether you're using the DWG files um, I just file set files whatever you're uh, whatever you're importing or uh, or bringing in um, as long as you have that associative relationship um, those will uh, those will be maintained so um, just kind of some neat tips hopefully you can use those thank you much